Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. Uh, we invite you to stand with us as we worship the Lord and praise the Lord with song. We'll sing Give Thanks. We have a scripture reading from First Chronicles and we're singing Come Into His Presence. Chronicles 16, verse 34 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And say, Save us, O God of our salvation, gather us together, and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. I was thinking about the congregation, and I thought we should have the most sophisticated, most attractive, most intelligent member of the congregation. And so naturally, I asked my wife.
Uh, I have several announcements. Um, today at 5.30, there is bell rehearsal here in the sanctuary before the loyalty dinner. Um, also, youth are meeting at 5.30. They're going to be serving and setting up at the loyalty dinner. So please be here if you were going to do that. Um, let's see. Next Sunday, December 1st, a birthday party for Del Murillo, 2 to 4 in the Fellowship Hall. Um, no cards, please. Um, they said, or, sorry, no gifts. Instead of gifts, bring a written memory of Delmer that we can put in the book. Um, so that's 2 to 4. And then at 6 o'clock, we have Carols and Candlelight. Um, let's see. This week also, nominating committee today, after services, is meeting. Um, and then there's no activities on Wednesday, so make note of that. Let's see. There's a sign-up sheet for Christmas extravaganza for finger foods. That's going to be December 8th at 6 o'clock. And remember that there's not a covered dish that day because of the extravaganza. If you would like to purchase a poinsettia for the sanctuary, your order needs to be placed by Monday the 25th. They are $16. Um, checks made out to First Baptist Church, and we need to let Michelle know so that she can get those ordered for us. There's also a sign-up sheet for Salvation Army Bell Ringers. Our church is participating with that again this year. So if you would like to volunteer a couple hours of your time on a Saturday. We appreciate that. Coming up on December 22nd, there's a trip to Abilene to go see Nuncrackers. Um, and we need to know if you want to go, so we have a ticket for you. So if you could let the church know by December 18th, the cost of tickets is $18. I think that is everything I have. All right. Please stand for the right hand of fellowship. For this place that we can come together to worship and fellowship with other believers. We're mindful, Lord, of the many blessings that you've given us, and we thank you for this opportunity to give back. We pray for your will, for the offerings that are collected today, that they would be used in a way that brings you honor. In your name we pray. Amen.
That was beautiful. Thank you, ladies. <clears throat> For our hymns of worship today, we'll begin on page 797. If you take your hymnal or watch the screen and stand as you're able, we'll sing just the first verse. <laughs> morning. It is with humble and thankful hearts. We are thankful for the many people that are here this morning. We are mindful of the many that are away uh, traveling and many that will be gone throughout this week. As we come together this morning, we do praise our great God. We do thank our Lord. And we ask that those things that we brought with us this morning, those requests, those hurts, those situations that are hidden in our heart, Lord, we lay them down before you this morning. Father God, we lift to you several requests, and we seek your will in each of these. We pray for the Spielman family. We ask that your healing would be poured out. We pray that your strength and courage would be seen in their lives. Father, we pray for the Langbart family as they continue to mourn Denny. We pray for the Hauserman family as they continue to lift little Luke up to you, and we lift him up to you this morning as well. We pray that you would bring healing to him. We pray with the Snodgrass family. We lift to you also the Shivers family and the Roberts family. We pray too for the May family as they have lost loved ones recently. We think also of the Nemnick family and Lloyd as he is in Medical Lodge, as he is missing Maxine. Father God, as we look to Thanksgiving, we know that there are so many things that can dampen our spirit. But Lord, we turn to Jesus and see his face. And we have so much to be thankful for. Father God, we pray that as a congregation, as families, and as individuals, that you will help us to be ever thankful, to be thankful in all situations, in all circumstances, for that is your will for us. And we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You may, may be seated.
Well, good morning. As the choir comes down to join you, the children will be dismissed for Children's Church as well. And you know, I have a, a great appreciation for the children. I had the opportunity to visit with two Sunday school classes, um, two of the children's Sunday school classes this morning, and talk with them about baptism and what baptism is and why we baptize and how we baptize and who we baptized and uh, tried to answer their questions about that. And we had a little field trip down to the baptistry. It was exciting. And, and I shared with Danny, I was more afraid of them than I am of the Cornerstone Sunday School class, which is the senior citizens. So. But what a blessing to have them. And of course, we appreciate very much uh, Bev and Ken, their Sunday School teachers. And we appreciate all of our Sunday School teachers, don't we? Amen. Don't we? Yes. Amen. <laughs> I was going to say, if you don't appreciate them, you can be them next week. <laughs> well, I am glad that you're here. I hope you have had a blessed week. It has been different. It, you, know, you know we are from Michigan, and we've had a little slice of home this week with the ice and the cold. And, you know, I'm beginning to think maybe Kansas isn't so bad after all. <laughs> but we do welcome you this morning. I thank Danielle for serving this morning with the announcements, and um, I think we had three different piano players this morning, but that's exciting, and the praise team and the choir, it's so great when different people can come together and serve the Lord, and so we appreciate that. Um, I will encourage you now, if you turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, that'll be our scripture passage, and it's just one little verse this morning. Our, our message this morning is a simple message. You know, sometimes they seem a little complicated, but this morning, um, it's, it's going to be a simple message for us as we look forward to Thanksgiving. Our passage is Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, and stand, if you will, as we read that verse, Matthew 20, verse 18, and it's one that you probably all can quote. It says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for the opportunity to gather together this morning. We thank you for each one that is here. We thank you for each family that is represented. And Father, as we come now to this time of the message, we do pray that you would speak to our hearts. Speak to each one of us today. We pray that you would encourage us all to lay down our burdens. Lay down those things that would hinder us from allowing your spirit to have his will and way in our lives today. Lord, we thank you for what you've accomplished so far. We know that you have great things in store for us today. And we look forward to that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as you know, we are looking forward to Thanksgiving, just a few more days to go. How many of you already have your turkeys? Most of you, some of you. You know, we are excited. We're having some different things on our, our table uh, for Thanksgiving this year, and so we're looking forward uh, to that. But we do, we look forward to being, or to Thanksgiving. It's a reminder for us of those things for which we are thankful our faith, our freedom, our families. And this month we have explored a few different things that should encourage us as believers in Jesus Christ to be thankful. We talked about remembering that God loves us, that God loves others, and God wants to use us as instruments of his love. We shared about how we ought to proclaim the faith of others. Remember we said it's easy to look for the faults, but we need to take the time to look for the faith and to proclaim that and to praise that. Last week we talked about giving. Giving. And we saw the example of giving. We saw the command to give. And we also understood that the ultimate blessing of giving is Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that as well. This morning we gather together. 
We gather together and we do so, and as we do so, we can find more reasons to be thankful. If we gather for Christ, if we gather in Christ, and if we gather with Christ. This morning's message is not only really a Bible lesson, it's a little bit of an English lesson too, you know, your prepositions. Oh, some of you just switched off. Well, come back, come back to me. You know, we're going to focus on a few different of these prepositions and how they impact our spiritual life because they do. And again, as we recognize these prepositions and how they impact us, we can pray and we ought to pray that it will create within us a new sense of gratitude and thanksgiving and thankfulness. We need that. We need that. But before we do that, we need to consider very quickly, what does it mean to gather? Well, in a farming community, it doesn't take much explanation, does it? It's kind of collecting things, assembling things, you know. When they gather in the harvest, like those songs that we sang, you know, they were collecting the crops. When we gather together, it's an assembly. Is somebody sitting behind this tree? <laughs> oh, it's Maddie. Hi. Oh, I'm not picking on her because I live with her. So. <laughs> Gathering together, assembling together, assembling together. Now, though, let's look at this gather in relation to these other words. Gathering for Christ. Gathering for Christ. The idea behind for really is purpose. It shows a purpose. And let me ask you this morning, what is your purpose? What's your purpose? It's an interesting question. We often ask ourselves that question different times throughout our lives. But another question is, do we have a purpose? Do we have a purpose? Yes. Yes, we do. Do you know what your purpose is? Hmm. That may be another question. Well, what is a purpose? It's a reason, right? It's a function. It's a use. It's an intent. You know? And each one of us, on some level, have a different purpose. But as believers, there's an overarching purpose that we all have. You know? Each one of us has a unique function. We're kind of like tools in God's toolbox, you know? There's the hammer that you get out when you need to hammer something, nails or something, you know? Do, 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 do. You want to watch your thumb, right? There's pliers. There's a screwdriver. There's a tape measure. Ever, have you ever used, Deanna, have you ever used a tape measure? I know she has. I've seen her do it. How effective would a tape measure be if you needed to hammer something? Not very effective. Now, if you've got a really heavy-duty one, you might be able to... But that's not its function, right? But if you step back, those tools do have an overarching purpose. Right? So as we look at each other, and go ahead, look at each other, if you want to anyways, go ahead. Look. And now you all will agree that Danielle is the most intelligent, the most beautiful. <laughs> you all have a different function. You all have a different purpose. But we're going to step back and say, as believers in Christ, when we come, when we gather together for Christ, we gather together for a shared purpose. And you know, it is hard for us if we don't know what that purpose is. It's hard to accomplish it if we don't know what it is, isn't it? Imagine you're a teenager, and I know some of you, you'll have to do a lot of imagining because it's been a while. But imagine you're a teenager, and mom and dad have left you home alone. And as they walk out the door, they say to you, don't forget, by the time I get home, I want your chores done. All right? They shut the door, get in their car, and are gone. And then you realize, they didn't tell me what my chores are. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. 
Imagine the frustration we'd have. Perhaps the fear, the struggle, the turmoil, not knowing. It robs us of joy. It robs us of peace. And when mom and dad get home, we don't have the work done. Without a purpose, we have no goal, we have no aim, we have no target. And as it has been said many times, if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. And sadly, as we gather for Christ, <coughs> gather for our common purpose, if we don't know what that common purpose is, we ain't accomplishing it. But, to put it simply, we as Christians... We are called to a purpose. Romans 8.28 says, We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. God's purpose. Christ's purpose. Our purpose is Christ. It is Christ. The beginning of everything we do, the middle of everything we do, the end of everything we do, is Christ Jesus. Our actions, our activities, everything should point to Christ. We should be praising Christ, worshiping Christ, honoring Christ, imitating Christ, allowing Christ to live through us in everything we say, do, or think. When we gather together for Christ, it's not a social time. It's not a self time. Our purpose is a savior time. Focusing on Jesus. If we want to be thankful people, we need to stop and shift our focus back to Jesus Christ. Back to Jesus Christ. You know, behind this screen, there's a little picture um, a little silver thing of Joseph and Mary and then the baby Jesus in there. We have our cross which reminds us that Jesus isn't up there anymore, that he is alive. But as we look around this room, we see Jesus there. And we see Jesus there. But hopefully, and most importantly, as we look at each other, we need to make sure that we're seeing Jesus there. We need to stop and shift our focus to Jesus. Do it now. Whatever you're thinking about, and you know, I've been to church before. I know sometimes when the pastor speaks that people's minds wander. And maybe your mind is wandering about some, onto some issue that you have this morning. morning. Maybe you have a relationship issue that you're thinking about. Maybe there's a health issue that you're thinking about. Maybe you have a financial issue. You're struggling. Maybe it's a job issue. Maybe it's a lunch issue. Our purpose in gathering together for Christ isn't that. Our purpose is Christ. So let's stop and think about Jesus. Let's worship Him. Let's praise Him. Let's celebrate Him and thank Him. What did I say? Let's worship him. Let's praise him. Let's celebrate him. Let's thank him. Somebody thank him. Delmar, you're good for this. Amen. Amen. I love to pray with Delmer. One, because it almost always guarantees he's going to be quick. Uh, no. <laughs> but when he's done praying, he says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we walk in these doors, whichever doors you walk in, it's for the purpose of Jesus Christ. If we want to be thankful people, we have to remember that, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. That, after all, is our intent, to gather together for Him. Not only do we gather for Him, but it doesn't end there. Our second proposition this morning is gathering in Christ. And it's a little word, but it has so much 
meaning. And it reminds us of our position. For is our purpose, in is our position. All right? For reminds us why we are here. In reminds us of where we are and who we are. What is our position in Christ? You know, we talk about our position a lot of times. A lot of times when we think of position, we think of it in terms of our profession. You know, my position at this company is this, that, and thing. Or we think politically. Well, I have a conservative, I have a liberal, I have a moderate position. But very often it's where do we stand? Where do I stand in the company? Where do I stand in the spectrum of politics? Well, where do we stand when it comes to Jesus Christ? Where do we stand? Now, I'm going to share a few things with you very quickly. And uh, I'm going to go through them kind of fast. It's another one of these laundry lists, but it's an excellent laundry list. Because uh, I want it to demonstrate to us just who we are and where we are in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to try to go through it really quick. But as you have learned that when I try to read something and go quickly, sometimes I step on my tongue. And if you're not careful, if your mouth is open, I might step on your tongue too. But I'm going to read from you a, a list that comes from a book called Victory Over the Darkness that was written by Neil Anderson. And in that he talks about how realizing the power of our, den our identity in Christ. He talks about when we really recognize who we are in Jesus it really does give us liberty. It gives us freedom. It gives us confidence by knowing who we are and where we are in Jesus. It creates, hopefully, in us new, a new sense, a new spirit of joy and thankfulness. So I want to share with you some of these. And if, and if you say, I can't remember all these, I can't write all these down, well, don't worry. This book's in our church library, so you can check it out whenever you're ready. But I want you to listen for just the next couple of minutes as I remind you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, of who you are and where you are in Jesus Christ. Number one, and I probably shouldn't number them because it'll go on forever. Number one, we are the salt of the earth from Matthew 5.13. Matthew 5.14, we are the light of the world. John 1.12, we are the children of God. John 15, 1 and 5, we are part of the true vine, a channel of Jesus Christ's life. John 15, 15 says, we are Jesus Christ's friend. Did you know you're a friend of Jesus today? Did you hopefully you know he's your friend too? John 15, 16, we are chosen and we are appointed by God, by Christ, to bear fruit. Romans 6, 18, we are a slave of righteousness. That's who we are today. Romans 6.22, we are slaves to God. Romans 8.14 and 15 and Galatians 3.26 and 4, verse 6. You got all those? We are children of God. God is spiritually our Father. Romans 8.17, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We share His inheritance. We share it with Him. 1 Corinthians 12, 17 says we are members of Christ's body. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says we are new creations. It doesn't end there, though. Who we are in Christ, it keeps going. We are reconciled to God and ministers of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. And that's a hard one there. We're supposed to be ministers of reconciliation. Whose job is it to reconcile? Well, if I'm a minister of reconciliation, guess what? God working through me. Galatians 3.26, I'm a child of God and I'm one in Christ. Galatians 4.6, I'm an heir of God since I'm a child of His. 1 Corinthians 1.2, remember this, you are a saint. You are a saint. Ephesians 2.10, you are God's workmanship. You're God's tool. God's tool. Ephesians 2.19, you're a fellow citizen with the rest of the family of God. Ephesians 3.1, you're a prisoner of Christ. Ephesians 4.24, we are righteous and holy. Ephesians 2.6, we're a citizen of heaven. Colossians 3.3, we're hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3.4, we're an expression of the life of Christ. Colossians 3.12, we are chosen of God, holy and dearly loved. 1 Thessalonians 5.5, we're children of light, not of darkness. Hebrews 3.1, we're holy partakers of a heavenly calling. 
Hebrews 3.14, we're partakers of Christ, we share in his life. We are living stones according to 1 Peter 2, verse 5. We are members of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession from 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. We are strangers to this world in 1 Peter 2, 11. We are children of God and we resemble Christ when he returns, will resemble Christ when he returns according to 1 John 3, 1 and 2. And 1 John 5, 18 says we are born of God and the devil cannot touch us. You want something to be thankful for? Recognize that in Christ, that's what you are. That's where you are. That's who you are in Christ. Is it in my own strength, in my own power, in my own righteousness? No. All my righteousness is what? Filthy rags. But in Christ, we're all that and so much more. In Christ... In Christ. And the good thing is, as we gather together, we recognize that each of us, each of us, each of us as believers are those things. I'm not the only one. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Well, it's only the pastor. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> no. Each and every one as believers in Christ. As we gather together this morning, let's recognize, really recognize that the other members of this body are also gathering in Christ. So let us extend to them peace and love and mercy and forgiveness and hope and trust and grace. You know, I am a sinner saved by grace. If you've accepted Jesus, you are a sinner saved by my grace. And as we gather in Christ this morning, let's focus on that grace. Grace. So again, let's stop. And just as we gathered for Christ, let us also gather in Christ. Let us look around this room and see each other for what and who we are. Yes, we're failures. Yes, we are sinners. But let's look at each other through the eyes of Jesus. Through the eyes of Christ. Through the shed blood of our Savior. And let us see each other as the children of God that we are in Christ. Then we'll be thankful. Well, so far we've looked at ourselves and we have looked at others. But there's one other person that we need to look to today. We have seen gathering for Christ and we've seen gathering in Christ. Let us now understand that we are gathering with Christ. With. Not why or how or where or who, but who, with who. With speaks, or for speaks of purpose, in speaks of position, but with speaks of participation. You know, participation, I always remember, you know, in school I always hated when you had to have participation points. I was, uh, I was an auditory learner, I could learn by hearing, and I could sit there and, you know, could listen to this and I could learn it all, but I wasn't going to talk. Don't ask me to raise my hand in class. Don't ask me to do something, you know. What did you say? <laughs> How times have changed? No. Is that I'd go up to the teacher at the end of the first class and say, I'm not raising my hands, but I guarantee you, if you ever call on me, I'll have the answer. Because I was just like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Fortunately for most of them, that was good enough, and they never really called on me. But I had a couple that were like, oh, and they did. But participation... As we gather together this morning, let us never forget that there is an overlooked person with us this morning. Someone that we sadly too often overlook in our lives. And that's Jesus Christ. We don't count him in our attendance. He doesn't get our 
uh, our newsletter or our emails. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. This morning, Jesus is with us. God is here. Now, you might not see him. You might not feel him. But he's made a promise to us that if two or three, well, I'm one, Delmer's two, Sharon, will you be our third? Three of us, at least, have gathered in Jesus' name. And if, where there are two or three, what did Jesus say he was going to do? He will be in the midst of us. He will be here. I am there, he says. Jesus is here. What would we say? What would we do? What would it mean to us if I said, oh, I have a special guest for you. This will make your Thanksgiving. And I open that door and out walk Jesus Christ. Now, of course, many of us would be like, yeah. And we'd be, he'd be like, all right, all you doubting Thomases, come here. Put his hands out. Expose his side. What would it mean to us? How would it change us? Probably all of us that are slouching in our seats, we'd snap to attention because that's what Jesus really cares about, our posture, you know. But the truth is, if we really understand it, that Jesus is with us. God is here. The Holy Spirit is with us. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is here this morning. Let us understand it. Let it change us. Let it challenge us. Let it move us. As we gather together this morning, let's make sure that when we leave, we do not leave the same, but renewed and refreshed and encouraged and motivated. For we are in the very presence of the Lord today. God told Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Well, folks, we ought to be kicking off our shoes and off our sandals and off our boots and off our pumps and whatever you call them. If you've got Crocs on, just keep those on. But no, just kidding. As we gather for Christ and in Christ, we need to recognize that we also gather with Jesus Christ. He is here. He is with us. His Spirit wants to speak to our hearts. He cries out to us to get to know Him better, to come to Him, to love Him, to love one another. We are in His presence. And the truth is, as believers, there is nothing that can separate us from the presence of God. Because we are with Christ. We are with Him. But that's only true if we have accepted him and his gift of salvation. You know, we talk about being um, gathered for Christ and in Christ and with Christ. In order to do that, we have to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have to recognize that we have a need. We have to recognize that we can't accomplish that need. You know? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. For there is none righteous. No, not one. Apart from Christ, folks, we're doomed. We're toast. We're destined for an eternity in hell without hope of escape. 
And God knew that, and God knew that we'd never make it. The best among us, the Mother Teresas or the Billy Grahams, they don't even make it. They don't even qualify. They can't even cut it. All of us are just, from birth, are doomed. <coughs> but God had a plan. God knew that. He made a plan. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who lived a perfect, sinless life as fully God and fully man. He went to that cross and He shed His blood for everyone but you. That would be fair. There's 7 billion people on the planet right now, they estimate. What if Jesus said, I'll sacrifice for everyone but just one of you? <coughs> the world would say, yes, we'll take that. But that's not what he did even. He did it for everybody. Everyone that's here today, everyone that's on the planet today, everyone that's been on the planet, the billions and billions of people, he took upon him the sins of all of us. He suffered and died that we might have life, life everlasting, life abundantly. And all he asks in return is a small investment of 100000 But No. All he asks is that you take the gift. He's accomplished everything. All you have to do is say, huh, I'll take that. You know, growing up, my dad used to say sometimes, I'll buy that for a dollar. We don't even have to pay a dollar. We just have to take it, accept it, believe it, trust it, be confident in it, that Jesus has paid for my sin and your sin. Because he has. God has made the way through His Son, Jesus. If we're going to be thankful this year by gathering for Christ and in Christ and with Christ, the first thing we have to do is accept Christ. Accept His grace. Accept His love. And those of you that have already accepted Christ's love, why don't you share a little bit with your neighbor? They could use it. Why don't you demonstrate that grace for somebody else? You say, oh, they don't deserve grace. Neither did I. But God did it. But you don't know. They hurt my feelings. They said, they've upset me. They've stepped on my toes. Well, what does my sin do to Jesus? What does my sin do to God? And he has forgiven and forgiven and forgiven. Freely. If we say that we love God, but we don't love our brothers, Scripture says there's a problem with that. If we want to be thankful people, the best way that we can show our thankfulness is to extend the gift that Christ has given to us. As we gather here this morning, we have gathered hopefully, for Christ. I hope you didn't come to see me because I ain't worth it. We gather in Christ. We gather with Christ. But let's make sure that we have a relationship with Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for this opportunity to, to come together, to gather together. And Lord, we know that each one of us does have our own issues. Each one of us struggles with different people in different situations. None of us are perfect. And, and Lord, we know that you know that. But God, today, we pray that your spirit would challenge us, would speak to our hearts and allow us to lay those burdens down, to lay them at the foot of the cross, to give them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to allow Him and His Spirit to work in us. That we would be a body that is united. 
a body that celebrates one another, but even more celebrates our Savior. And Father, we pray that each one of us here have come to a point in our lives when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. But if there are any here that haven't yet done that, we pray that your Spirit would speak to their hearts today. That they would recognize the truth that as a sinner, like we all are, we can't make the cut. We can't be good enough. We can't give enough. We can't do enough. The only thing we can do is accept the gift that God gives us. Accept that Jesus Christ has paid for our sins through his shed blood, through his death, burial, and resurrection. What I know, many times it seems so simple, and that's because it is. God, we pray that as we sing this song of invitation, that each of us would answer the call of it to come just as we are. If we're hurting, let us come to Jesus. If we need to be saved, let us come to Jesus. If we're struggling, let us come to Jesus. And we know that he will accept us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our hymn of invitation. your presence would be with us. We pray that you would bless the activities of this day, Lord. We ask that you would be with us this evening as we have our loyalty dinner. We pray that you would bring many of us back to participate in that. Father, we ask as we leave now also that if any that are traveling this week, that you would give us safety as we do that and bring us home safely as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.